What's up guys? Welcome back to my live stream. Uh, if you joined my live stream like half, about half an hour ago, um, I was having some technical difficulties so I had to stop it. For some reason my internet connection was very slow and YouTube was complaining that um, about the video quality so I had to stop it. But uh, it seems that everything is working now. So uh, we can start doing our live, uh, our live streams. Um, if you are new to this channel, I'm Jose Rano and I develop game engines and I go on YouTube uh, and share everything that I know about game engine development um, so that you can develop your own. Um, also, I would like to invite you to join my Discord server. We, we have a community of uh, 510 and 15 members as of now, yeah, 515. Um, all of us de de are developing our own game engines. So uh, if you want to be part of a community, where we like to help each other and provide tips and share knowledge, you know, feel free to join us. Um, the link to my Discord server is in the description below. So, um, you know, um, join us. We'll be happy to have you. All right, guys, so what are we gonna do today? Well, for the past two weeks and a half, I have been going uh, live on YouTube and basically, um, the, you know, I have the, uh, implemented the uh, my scene editor for my game engine, the Untold engine, the Unt uh, game engine that I have been developing for about eight years now. Um, so I mean, the you know at that stage where my game engine is, you know already has um, a rendering system, a mathematics engine, a physics and collision system, camera system, you name it. You know, you know it has a lot of components. But now uh, my focus for this version of the game engine is to implement a scene editor, and I'm you. Um, um, and I'm using uh, the Imgui library to do so. So tell you what, why don't I share with you what I have been doing as of now, uh, what the game engine is capable of doing. Uh, and then, you know, we can uh, start thinking of what I'm gonna do next, all right? So let me bring up the engine so you can actually, uh, you know, see it. Um, hopefully uh, it doesn't take a, a long time to compile because what I had to do um, in order to fix this issue with YouTube um, and the whole live streaming uh, was to, um, I had to restart my computer. Um, so I hope that Xcode, the IDE that I use to build my game engine, doesn't decide to compile every single file of my game engine, which may take a long time, but that's not a problem because in the meantime, I can actually answer some questions that you may have as a game engine developer. As a matter of fact, if you have any questions related to game engine development, you know, feel free to post them in the chat and I'll be more than happy uh, to answer them. So, you know, um, let's answer some questions that you may actually have as, as a aspiring game engine developer. So let me look for them. Um, actually, have them, I have them in my notes. Um, just let me bring those up. Uh, boom, over, over here. All right. Um, one question that I, I, I get, you know, often is, you know, what should you, con what should you consider before developing a game engine? Uh, and this is something, you know, um, that I, I would like you to keep in mind as you are developing your own game engine. Um, what you should consider is the opportunity cost that you are letting go, right? Developing a game engine will take you a really, really long time to develop. Um, it's not something that you can showcase within a month or even six months. Um, it's not like, a, you know, it's developing a game. Um, it's, uh, it will take you a long time. So as you decide to develop your game engine, Think about what are you letting go, right? Um, it will be more financially beneficial to you to you know to focus on developing a game um, instead of a game engine. You may be able to develop a game within six months, um, you know, publish it and make some money from it. Um, you cannot do the same from developing a game engine. Uh, it will take you a really really long time um, and many headaches to actually get your game engine going. So, you know, the good things about, you know, developing a game engine is that you are going to learn a lot, more than you imagine, right? You're gonna learn a lot, a lot about 
uh, about rendering systems, about uh, physics and collision detection system, the algorithms. You're going to learn uh, uh, how to use shaders, how to program shaders, uh, and stuff like that. So it has, you know, benefits to it, but also, you know, not everybody, you know, can, can just, you know, waste five years of their life, you know, just developing a game engine and, uh, you know, and not making some, any money from it, right? So um, if you happen to have a really good job and that job allows you to, to dedicate some free time on your work on your game engine, and you're happy learning algorithms and doing stuff related to, you know, kind of like more mathematically heavy, um, then go for it. But if you, if you really think of, you know what, I really need to, to do something to at least have a portfolio because I want to get hired by, by a game studio, um, then um, developing games will be more beneficial because you can use that as your portfolio when you, whenever you are applying and interviewing for uh, you know, game development uh, positions. Um, again, with a game engine, in my, you know, in my opinion, in my experience, I didn't have anything to show, show to show for for about three years. Yes, I had, I could show you little you know little demos, but that was nothing like impressive to to show. Um, so you know, keep that keep that in mind. What's up, uh, Global Coders? How are you, dude? Hey, man! If you have any questions, Hanoop, uh, you know, uh, let me know. Uh, I'll be more than happy, you know, to answer them. Um, so feel free. Right now, what I'm waiting uh, is basically uh, I'm just waiting for my game engine to compile. Um, I was having some issues with YouTube, so I had to restore my computer, my Mac. Uh, and now the Xcode ID decided to, you know, to take, to compile every single file in my game engine. So it's going to take some time for it to compile. That's something that I have to deal with. But, you know, that's, you know, that's something that you, I guess, right, we will have to deal with. So um, not now, um, one thing that also um, some people tend to ask me is, you know, what documentation do I use? No, what tool do I use to document my game engine? And my, I wrote my game engine using C++, right? So there's this really effective tool. I'm not calling it nice. There is this really efficient tool called uh, Doxygen, which will parse your game engine and will basically create documentation for your API. Doxygen is a really, really, amazing efficient tool um, and I really like it a lot however the output of Doxygen is you know it's not nice at all it's like you know from the 1980s in my opinion and I really hate it uh, but I still use it because the you know the documentation that it produces is really good however um, I was using Doxygen before but now uh, I found this website called um, Doc, uh, Git, uh, is it um, let me see if I can find it give me one second uh, it, it is a really good uh, is it Gitbooks? yeah gitbook.com and I'm bringing it up so you can see it. So just give me one second because I want to show you how uh, I want to show you the, uh, what it produces for my game engine, the output. So Gitbook is basically uh, this um, website that helps you build, uh, you know, beautiful documents supposedly. And, and they are beautiful, right? They, they're really cool and I really like, like that. So um, I'm going to show you how, how it looks uh, with my game engine. Right, if you go to untoldengine.com and you go to start developing, it will take you to the documentation that I was able to create using Gitbook. Um, again, it, it is really nice. Um, um, you can use Markdown to create all this. I, I really like how it looks I have more than the oxygen. Um, so, you know, a tool that you may want to consider while when when creating the documentation for your engine, the how the how to, the knowledge base, etc., is Gitbook. Um, Gitbook will not obviously be able to parse your code, will not be able to create the API documentation which you need. Uh, but you know, for users that 
you know, for your the game developers, this what GitBook uh, produces is, is good enough. Now I'm going to show you how the API looks, and this is using basically um, uh, the Doxygen tool, right? So basically, um, this will show you everything here. So now, if you go here to the modules, the classes, a um, um, you know Doxygen ports my whole game engine, so it will take you here. And you can see all of the methods that I wrote and everything that I have uh, basically documented. Now, obviously, as you can see, as you can tell, um, the whole um, the whole uh, blah, 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 documentation is not as nice as GitHub. However, uh, as for game developers, we tend to use the API documentation a lot. I, I use it a lot when I'm developing, when I'm, you know, improving my game engine. All right. so. As you can see, my game engine is still, it's still, you know, um, building. So um, this is taking way longer than I expected. So sorry, guys, um, but technical difficulties, something, you know, I had to fix them today. So I, um, I did notice that my computer was a bit, a bit slow earlier in the morning, but I didn't think it was going to affect my live stream today. So, um, you know, what do you need to get started to develop a game engine, right? Um, Basically, you know, the tools that you need to get started uh, are basically an IDE, right? Uh, whatever IDE you want to use, uh, if you, whether you're using Windows, Linux, or Mac. For example, in my case, I use a Mac, so the IDE that I use is, the, uh, is Xcode. Um, but aside from the IDE, the other two that I recommend you to, to learn and to get, to install in your computer, is Git, right? Git is basically a virtual control that will allow you to, you know, keep track of all of, of, all, of, all, of, of all the changes that you are doing in your game engine. It is a necessary tool, not only for game engine developers, not only to develop your game engine, but for any type of development that you, you know, do, right? If you are a developer, you need to learn to use Git either through the terminal or through the GUI. It is a must, guys. There's no, no, you know, should I or should I not? No, you should, you have to. So I really recommend you to do so. So basically, let me show you, now the engine is running finally, so let me show you, um, let me just double check that I'm here. So let me show you uh, what I have done as of now. So. Now, you know, let's say you can use players, we can select the um, class that we want the engine to instantiate the model that I have selected in my asset pane, so load. Um, we can select field, I can select it to be this type of object. Um, last time, if you remember, I was having an issue with the player not being able to rotate. Um, whenever I would rotate it, the entity, the object, uh, the model will start to, to start to shake. I, I was able to fix the problem. It was a very stupid mistake that I did. But now, you know, you can uh, use the, the whole um, slider to rotate uh, the model. So that was actually the issue that I fixed earlier. Um, and again, right, we can keep adding more stuff. Um, now um, we can also, oh yeah, the other thing that I did, was that I um, now I can actually save the location of my camera and also the orientation for the camera. Uh, before I wasn't able to do that, uh, but now um, we can fix that. Um, and also for my lights. Um, so actually let me do this. And you can see now if I save this, um, let me see, go here. Oh my gosh, we're gonna take it all the way there. I didn't want that to happen. Downloads. And I didn't want this to happen. Where's my thing editor? Uh, where's my thing editor? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hmm. <coughs> That's weird. Well, um, believe me, now I can actually save the camera, the irritation, the whole um, 
position of the camera and everything is looking nice. Now, what do I want to do today? Um, right now, today what I want to do is I want to uh, brainstorm how I'm going to uh, implement the whole um, selection of the of the entities using the mouse. So basically, what I want to do is I want to be able to click on the mouse um, and then um, be able to select the objects that are in the scene, right? Basically, it's called that is called um, yeah, well, picking an entity with the mouse. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using um, this method called, called uh, ray casting. Um, the whole idea is very simple, um, but I want to brainstorm and figure out what do I need to do. All right, so uh, let's do that. Uh, let me actually bring this. Let me bring, let me close this because we don't need this anymore. All right, so let me bring uh, my Autodesk sketchbook. Hey, Arlen, how are you, dude? How's it going, man? All right. Hey, by the way, guys, um, I hope that, um, you know, that the changes that I did to the, to the, um, to the um, Discord server, you know, are, 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 are helping. Um, I was getting, you know, I, I, I don't, I do not want spammers to come into the, into the server and start posting non nonsense. So, you know, now that channels are private, um, and you can only access them if you have a role, which you, sh you guys should, should have it. Um, you know, but, but I, I, I hope you, you like the better, uh, the server way better. Uh, Anoop, uh, which tool are you using? Um, what are you, what, what, what tool are you referring to Anoop? The one that I'm showing right now on the screen. All right, so um, Arlian is asking how to add Havoc physics. Um, I do not know what you're referring to, Arlian. Havoc physics. Um, yeah, you may want to expand on your question, so or color, you know, yeah, clarify your question. Uh, so this is called a uh, sketchbook, uh, and it, it is a nice little tool to, to sketch stuff out. Um, so now, let's brainstorm the things that I have to do and what I am going to do. Um, so my whole idea is that I have, you know, the screen is here, and we are going to have basically a bunch of uh, models, right? Let's say I have a triangle, a square, and a circle. And the whole idea is that when I, I click on the on the mouse, right, um, I'm you know I'm gonna be able to select them. So let's see how does this looks behind the scenes, right? So I have my screen here. Um, how do I undo this? And let me see if I can do it like this. Boom, right? And then my models are going to be behind the, the screen and they are going to be bounded with an AABB box, right? So basically, um, the whole idea is that each model in my scene are going to be bounded by a box, right? So, um, and let's say I have another one over here, right behind this one. Right, so the whole idea is this, that whenever I click on the screen, right, I'm going to create a ray. Um, and that ray is going to have the same direction of the camera. So the starting position of the ray is gonna be the, wherever I click in, on the X and Y coordinate of the screen, but the direction of the ray uh, is going to be pointing in the same direction as the camera. So basically, if I click here and I'm looking that way, that ray is going to go that way, right? It's going to go into that direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple test. Um, if the ray uh, intersects this particular uh, AABB box, um, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry for my handwriting, I'm missing the mouse, but this is AABB, uh, um, axis align boundary box. If the ray here R 
col uh, collides with the box here, then we have a head. So that means that we are selecting this particular, whatever model we have here. So let's say we have a, a little character here, right? And the character is bounded with this AAP box. And you know, here we could have another character, for example, right? Um, so if there's a, uh, you know, if there is a collision, um, then we know that we hit that box, that, that particular character. If the, if we, if the, if we click here, then the ray may have, may go that way and it may have, may collide with this particular model. So now we know that it collided with that one. So, um, so that's basically what we are going, you know, what I'm planning to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that whole mouse picking using ray casting. Very simple. So now, what are the things that we need to do, right? Um, the things that we need to do is to realize that, number one, what I need to do is I need to bound, bind every entity in my sync graph with an AAB box. Currently, I do not do that. I haven't had, well, I, I do it for other purposes, but I don't do it as of now for this particular feature. So I need to be, I need to somehow create the AAB box for every entity. Um, after that, the other thing that I need to do is, well, that's basically, I need to create the AAB box. I already have my raycasting methods. If you go to my game engine, um, and if you go to Raycast, you can see that I already have a bunch of um, functions, methods that we you know are already doing what I want to do right now. So for example, this one will test the intersection between a ray and a 3D model, uh, but it will return the face of the triangle. Now this is a very complex um, test that I do. I don't want to do that test. What I want to do is something simpler than that. So I do know I have another ray. Where's the ray? Ray, ray. Ray cast. Well, that should be under math my mathematics engine for sure. Here it is. Um, so here I have, you know, here I have several methods that will do some interse intersection tests. So here I can intersect a ray with a plane, a ray with a triangle, a ray with an AAB box. This is exactly what we need. Um, and I'm glad that I'm showing you guys this because I want to bring up two points. Um, number one, um, when you develop when you develop your game your mathematics engine, you are going to start out with the basic uh, you know classes such as vectors, matrices, and quaternions. But then you will realize that your mathematics engine is not only based around those operations. Um, you will have to implement several other operations in your in your mathematics engine, right? Some of them will be uh, trigonometric operations. Other ones will be numerical. Um, operations, for example, whenever you want to remap a value, right? Um, or you want to get some random numbers between a min and a min value, max value. Um, if you want to test if, you know, if a particular uh, number is, you know, very close to zero or not, right? Your mathematics engine will grow as you develop your game engine uh, and you will have to implement several other um, classes into it. Now, the other point that I want to bring up is that, um, do you notice how, you know, have my Ray class here in my mathematics engine? And that this Ray class has different um, operations, for example, operations to intersect a plane, a triangle, or AAP box. This is what makes game engine development um, a very long process. It's not just, you know, developing, you know, and, and, and it's not just, how can I say this? The fact that you have to develop several helping functions or, or help helper functions in your game engine is what will make your game engine a very long process. For example, developing a collision detection system. The algorithm to implement the, the GJK collision detection is very simple. It is straightforward. 
However, however, for you to make that work, you will have to implement several, several uh, operations, right? Um, so that that particular algorithm will work. For example, here I have the tetrahedron, which is what you need to implement for the GJK uh, operations. Um, you need to test if a point is outside the plane. You need to test um, also, you know, the closest point on the tetrahedron, the closest triangle on the tetrahedron. Uh, you need to test is the point in this tetrahedron, yes or no. Um, you need to get the very centric coordinates of the point. And all of these operations are, you know, you will have to use just to determine if a particular, if two entities are colliding. And it's not only for the tetrahedron, for also for a, for a triangle, there are operations that are crucial in that algorithm, right? For example, you need to test if the point is on the triangle. Again, the very centric coordinates, the triangles, oh, on and on and on and on. And, and, and that's what makes game engine development so hard and, and so, you know, it's, it's so tough, guys. You know, it, it, it is, you have to do a lot of work. Um, but yeah, so let me write this down. Uh, so that way we know what we are doing, guys. So let's see. All right. So number one, what do we need to do? And again, I want to use this session as a brainstorming session for the mouse picking uh, with Raycast, with Raycast. So number one, um, what we need to do is implement A, B, 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 C, implement A, B, creation, to every um, entity in the scene, right? Uh, what else do we have to do? So once we have done that, um, we also want to highlight the entity, right? We want to know that we are selecting that particular entity, so um, highlight the entity. This will basically entails uh, for you to go into the shader um, and, 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 and modify the shader. So whenever there's a head, we modify the shader so that the, the entity is highlighted. Uh, need to modify the shader. All right. So I click on the screen and a particular entity is, is selected. There's, a, there's an intersection between the ray and the AAP box. Um, okay, got it. So implement the AAP box. Number two, test whether a ray is colliding with a AAP box, obviously. Uh, choose the closest um, AAB to the screen um, and this is very simple um, how we are going to choose which one is the closest AABB is basically like this so um, let's say that we have a ray here and well, let me I'm gonna do a box again here this one and then I'm gonna create a blue one over here on the back so you see what I mean uh, actually let me do it right behind it So let's say I have a array here, right? This is the starting point of the array, R0, and this is the direction, right? Um, so when we do the whole ray casting um, operations, what we, what, one of the things that we can get is um, how, not, not how long, but a parameter that tells us um, the the h value or t and i don't know what's the proper name but remember when we when we, you were in, in in high school and you had a, like a, a segment right a and then b right and then uh, we can actually determine this point by having a particular variable called h right where h can go from zero to one right if, if a 
If h is zero, then the point is a. If h is one, then the point is b. Same thing here, right? We can get this particular h value. Um, and so what I say when we need to get the closest a, a, b value, uh, a, a, b back to the screen, what we are basically going to be doing, um, you know, is determining, right? The closest, uh, the, sh the smaller, the smaller h, right? This could be h here or t, right? We're going to be choosing the smaller h. That would tell us, hey, this is this this particular a b box is in front of this other box. So that's how we're going to do it. Um, all right, all right. So uh, let me uh, answer some questions in the chat before we move on. Um, Arlene is asking, um, havoc face. You know what? Uh, let me actually Google that because havoc. I think I've heard of havoc. Uh, let me see, Havoc Physics. So I'm assuming you're referring to this, um, Arlene. Havoc is a middleware software you suite developed by an Irish company. So you're asking, how do I add a have a physics? I do not know how you add this particular library uh, into your game engine, um, Harlock. I have never used it. Um, but, um, hmm. Yeah, I do not know. I never used it. But I can tell you that, um, uh, you know, you're asking how to add, you know, the physics engine in OpenGL. So let me tell you this. OpenGL has nothing to do with a physics engine, nor vice versa. Uh, physics engine does not care how you render your entities, does not care about shaders, does not care about none of that, right? Physics engine is a, a separate component from the rendering system. Um, yes, they do work together in the sense that the physics um, engine will inform um, your entity of its new uh, position and velocity. Um, the rendering system will get that, that information and send it to the GPU so that it will update the position of the pixels. Um, you know, it's basically an illusion, right? Um, but um, the, the GPU will then, you know, translate the pixels to the new position, which will create the illusion, the effect that something is moving or something is colliding. Again, all of that is simply an illusion. Um, computer, com computer graphics is an is a, uh, uh, illusion, basically. We're just playing with pixels. That's what we do. <laughs> we just play with pixels the whole day uh, and make them move across the screen. Uh, but yeah. Um, I just want you to know that physics is completely separate from the rendering system. Um, just like the mathematics is completely different from the rendering system. They, um, they can communicate, but they don't really know, you know, how each, what, what, you know, what each component, you know, you know, how each component works. So keep that in mind. All right. So, um, let's answer another question that you guys may have. Um, again, if you have any questions related to game engine development, you know, feel free to ask. I'd be happy to, to you know, to, um, to help you out. So, uh, let me see. Um, let me see which one, which, which question to answer. Um, is it easier to build a game engine nowadays? Um, you know what? With nowadays, right? Now that we have a stack overflow, it is a lot e easier to develop a game engine than what it used to be before. Um, I cannot even imagine how people back then were able to build a game engine. Um, I relied a lot on articles. Um, aside from books, um, I relied a lot on articles that I found online. I relied a lot of uh, Stack Overflow, Google, uh, to build my game engine. Um, so because of that, right, the fact that we have access to all of this um, information in, in an instant, um, you know, you, I believe it is now a lot easier to develop a game engine. You know, even now, right, uh, uh, you know, if you go on YouTube, you can search for different uh, YouTube channels that 
you know, will show you how to develop a game engine, right? They have series on game engine development. Um, if you go on Twitch, you'll find a lot of people, you know, live streaming their game engine development process. I'm here, right? I'm here sharing with you my experience on game engine development. Imagine 10 years ago, right? Imagine like 07 or in the 90s, they didn't have this. I mean, I recall that we, uh, I had to go to the, to the library when I was in college because that was the only access to information, right? Um, Google wasn't around yet by the when I went to college, right? So I had to go to the, to the library to, to, and, and to do my research papers and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely a, a lot simpler. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so, you know, um, one thing that I do tell you guys, you know, uh, if you go to, to go, you know, if you go to Stack Overflow to search for a particular problem that you may have, right, uh, on game engine development or any development questions that you may have, you know, do, don't just copy and paste the solution that was provided to you. Uh, analyze the solution, right? Um, make sure to, to take that time to really study the answer, right? Um, and then apply it to your specific case, right? Because the answer may be a generic answer, um, but now, you know, may not, may not be taken into account the different corner cases that you need to take into account in your application. So, you know, you know, like, like you know, the person that provided the answer is already giving you that the answer. So the least that you could do is take the time and just analyze that you know, understand the answer, study it, and then take the time to, 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 to analyze it and then, you know, pour it into your application. Um, so I, I think it's beneficial. Um, don't just copy and paste because if you do not take the time to understand the answer, there will be a bug that's going to pop up and you do not know where is it coming from. You do not know why is it happening and you are going to be just wasting hours and hours and hours debugging your code simply because you did not take the time to understand what was given to you. So, you know, that's something I, I would I, I really recommend you to do. Um, you know, something to keep in mind. All right, uh, having said that, let's see, let, let's keep going on with this. So we, we need to implement my AAP creation for every entity in the scene. Then I need to test what whether a ray is colliding with the AAB. That is simple. Then we need to, we're just gonna choose that. And then we're going to highlight the entity. Um, the highlighting with the entity, basically we are gonna need uh, shaders, GPU shaders to do that. Um, now actually, um, something cool that I have done in my game engine, and I do not know if I have shown you this before, uh, but let me re close this. So my game engine has this ability where you can actually uh, implement, uh, not implement, but uh, use hat reloading, shader hat reloading. So um, let me show you this, all right? So this is my shader and I'm going to simply use this. So you can see what I mean, um, and I'm gonna be. Mo I want to show you this so you know what why what I'm gonna be modifying once a particular entity has been selected. All right. So let me select the field here just for the heck of it, and then let me use the player, um, and let me select the player as this. All right. Now, if I select a player here, um, under in this section here in the entities properties, you're gonna see that the the final pass pipeline, basically um, uh, what is used for the rendering pipeline is called the test pipeline. And the shaders that I'm using are called the vertex test pipeline shaders, right? These are shaders that I have here for testing purposes. But basically what I can do is the following, right? I'm going to bring my model here and I want to show you this, right? So I'm gonna rotate it. Now I'm going to open up a shader and I'm going to do a hard reload of the shader. What this means is that I'm going to dynamically change my shader and you're gonna see changes in this character, 
all right in this model right so i'm going to open up the open up the shader um and let me look for my particular um file and give me one second all right let me just look for this uh, what's the name for this guy it's called model shader shouldn't take that long so um, Okay, for some reason I'm having. Oh, you know what? I didn't know that you can actually do this. Oh, cool. Um, I had no idea you could, that you could actually do you, you do, do a search. Okay, cool. All right. Now check this out, guys. All right. Um, I'm gonna go to my shader and I'm going to play around with the final color. All right. Um, and I know this doesn't look nice, but just keep in mind. So this is this, this section right here is my fragment shader and the fragment shader controls basically the pixel color of my, of my, of my entity. All right. The vertex shader controls the geometry of my entity. The fragment uh, controls the whole uh, color, the pixel colors, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do my, the, my final color. Let me do this. I'm gonna do that my return final color is color red, all right? So I'm gonna do float four, uh, and then I'm going to specify the color red. Uh, so basically this is the RGB alpha, so R, G, B alpha, right? And I'm gonna save this, right? So now check what's gonna happen once I do the hot reload into this. Um, it's going to um, go into red. Right, that's called hard reloading because now I can play around with the shader, right? Again, you know, I can change this to um, red and blue. That should give you purple, I think, right? Um, so let me go here again. Let me shade it and let me do the hard reload. And there you go. Now, you know, we have dynamically up, uh, modified that shader. Um, of course, right, we can do a lot of things with this, right? Um, instead of doing that, I'm, I can just provide a final color, which is a mixture of my texture and my lighting. Um, actually, check this out. Um, I'm going to modify, reduce this one, and oh, what I'm going to show is the lighting, all right? Um, so uh, let me do a pen shader, boom, and then hot reload. And this is basically the lighting that is being applied to the model, right? Um, you can see, you can tell that the light is over here, right? Now what I can do is I, now I can actually mix my lighting with my texture, right? Actually, let me show you uh, my texture. The texture is good for, yeah. So I'm gonna do get texture here, right? Um, and this is the beauty of, of learning, you know, shaders, right? Because once you know shaders, you will be able to uh, apply effects to your entities, to your game engine. Um, and shaders are the key, right? Um, so take the time to learn them. So this is basically the textures. There are, There is no shading whatsoever applied to this. It's only the texture, but uh, the whole shading effect, you know, from the light is not applied here, right? But um, I can blend in the shading due to the lighting and the textures, right? And you're gonna see a different you know, entity here now. Not a different one, but um, a more detailed entity. So here, final color is basically a mix of the final color and the kit texture, right? So if I go here and I do final color, boom. And I do open shader, boom here. Uh, and then hot reload, you can see now how the lighting was applied to the entity. Um, so, you know, this is the cool thing about computer graphics, right? Um, taking the time to learn OpenGL um, theory, right? Computer graphics theory, the rendering pipeline, what vertex shaders are, what fragment shaders are, will allow you to create really cool stuff, right? Um, Learning only the OpenGL API is not enough. You need to understand the theory uh, in the shade in shaders. That is the key if you want to have cool graphics, um, you know, in your game engine. So, so basically, right? Whenever we select, uh, whenever I click on the screen, 
and I select a particular model, what we want, what I want is that the edges of this model to be uh, highlighted, right? And we are going to do that using uh, shaders, modifying the shaders. Um, and, 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 um, and that's what I'm referring to here, All right? Cool. All right, guys. So um, now one of the things that I like to do whenever uh, I'm working with my game engine is that I like to follow a particular workflow, right? Um, first of all, I like to brainstorm what I'm going to do, right? In this case, the whole idea is very simple. We're going to create an AAP box and use a ray casting algorithm to detect if the ray is colliding with the AAP box. Once we know there's a collision happening, then we are ready to go and highlight the entity, right? But um, so once I have brainstormed my whole process, what I like to do is I like to go on to GitHub and create an issue for what I'm gonna be working on, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna to go to my GitHub page um, where I have my game engine. And then um, I simply, um, I'm going to create, create an issue, right? Um, an issue um, which I'm gonna be working on. So my new issue is gonna be uh, implement uh, mouse picking algorithm with ray casting. Right, uh, ray casting, boom. Um, and then I like to set the labels, you know, this is basically an enhancement. I'm gonna be doing this a live, I'm gonna be doing a live stream for this. Um, and this is a medium. And this is gonna be for my next um, beta version 16. So basically, so many issue. So now once I have this, what I do um, is I go on my terminal and, uh, let me see something, hold on. City desktop, city. Give me one second, guys. I'm just going to. All right. So then I go to my terminal, and I have I obviously use Git, right? So here, what I'm gonna do is Git status, and what it's gonna show me is gonna show me my current branch that I'm been working on from what, right? And that should actually be my development branch. Now, let me clear this so you get a better, better picture. So the status, it says I'm on my development branch, right? Now, um, the development branch has everything that I've been working on for the past, I don't know how many months on the latest version of my game engine, right? And you can actually have access to that development branch here. If you go to Untold Engine and you click on development, uh, you will see, you will have access to all of that. Um, it's not a branch that you want to obviously uh, play with because it's unstable, right? There's so many issues that I have, still have to fix, for example, all of this, right? Um, and once I have fixed all of that, then I move it to the master. But one thing that I do is once I'm here in my development branch, before I start working on something else, I create a new issue. And the new issue is actually 371. So how, what I do is I basically do git, check out negative B issue, uh, 371, which is basically the issue related to the implement mouse, right? Uh, with the raycasting. So I'm here, get check out, so I'm good. I switched to the new branch and I'm ready to start implementing this particular function or, you know, feature. So uh, then what I do just for my own, um, you know, sanity, because then I will not know what I'm working on, is to set it up as in progress. And boom, then that is it. That's how basically how, how I work. And then I can easily, you know, go ahead and make changes to my game engine. Um, and if you have never used Git, I, again, I strongly recommend you to use it because it's the best thing in the whole world. For example, uh, let's say that I'm gonna modify this, the editor pass file, right? And I'm gonna say, um, add a comment, whatever. Let me save this. If I come here, to my terminal, you get um, a status. It will show me the files that I have modified, um, which is the other pass. It can even show me uh, what was modified, right? If I get to get diff and then this, it will show me that in green, I added this particular line, added comment. Again, it's the best thing. So I, I strongly recommend you to, to use it. Um, again, and from here, I can also reset everything. 
Uh, so git restore, boom. And then if the good status is all gone, and even if I come here, um, let me just go here like this, you see it, everything is gone. So I strongly recommend you to use git. You can, you can either use git from the terminal or from the, um, you know, uh, from the uh, from the GUI. All right, guys. So let's see what can we do now. So we want to do a whole new operation, right? Let's see. What should I do? Should I implement this as a new system, like a a whole new system that whole purpose is to manage any clicks from the mouse? That would be overkill, so no. The only operation I, I want to implement is the mouse picking. The thing is, where do I, um, where do I implement that? In which folder, right? Um, I have several system here, right? I have a serializer, which is in charge of saving the same data, right? I have my entry factory, which is in charge of creating, instantiating uh, entities with a particular um, type. I have my scripting system, which I'm using with the language gravity, right? If this is not, if this is not done yet, I still need to do more work. Um, I have MGUI, I have a tree class, um, I have a profiler that will basically test how my game engine is doing, I have a debugger. I think the debugger is empty actually. I haven't touched that one in a long time. I have an UI system, I have an artificial system, I have a Raycast, uh, this is not a system at all, I don't know why I have it here. I have a particle system, I have a visibility manager, I have my shaders, my rendering engine, logger. So what I need to figure out is where do I, um, where am I going to implement this mouse picking up um, feature, right? That's one of the things that you also need to keep in mind as you develop your own game engine. You have different components, different systems, but um, you know, if you implement new stuff, you need to determine, okay, which system or which manager should be in charge of this operation? Should it be all by itself or should it be managed by another particular system, right? For example, um, I was talking earlier with some of the members in my Discord server and I was asking them, hey guys, how do you implement the whole mouse picking with ray casting, right? Some of them mentioned the same process as I mentioned with you know to you right now using array and an AAP box. Some other members mentioned that they do the whole mouse picking with um, by rendering the IDs of entities onto a texture. Um, and yeah, uh, yeah, onto a texture. Um, and and then and, and then what they do is that they read the pixel from the texture, right? If I were to do that, then I would consider implemented that in my rendering engine. Uh, that's the best place to have it. But now here, I need to think about where should I implement it. Um, and there's no place, obviously I should not put it, I'm not gonna put it in the physics engine. That's not where it belongs. Um, probably in the controller, because you know my controller deals with the inputs, right? Keyboards, mouse, joystick. Oh no, we have the joystick actually. But if I go into my controller, I think that that, that is the best place to to imp to add this. My controller. Here, my controller, as you can see, has different um, you know compo smaller components, touches, which deals for deals with uh, whenever you are using the iPhone, the Mac mouse, arrow keys, keys, the pad joystick. Um, so I think the best place to add it would be somewhere here and let the controller control that. I have to think about that. All right, guys, um, I think I'm on the end of the live stream. I'm getting tired already. Um, I hope I was able to answer your questions. I also hope that you learn from the questions that I, from the answers that I provided. Um, I hope they were you know, beneficial to you. Um, again, I would like to invite you to join my Discord server. Um, I'm gonna provide the link to that server is in the description below. Thank you guys so much again for joining. It's the second time today. Um, the first time I had a technical issue. So if you showed up again, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I'll see you again, hopefully, 
on Wednesday or if not on Thursday. Um, I will let you guys know. We'll send a, a tweet or um, send a message. Um, thank you guys so much. But I'm it's already 12, 20 and I'm getting tired. So, uh, you know, I hope, really hope it was beneficial to you. Uh, having said that, guys, thank you so much. And I'll see you uh, next time.